that have united their kingdoms, and as such, the new Spain emerges. Isabella Ferdinand. Isabella is from Castile, Ferdinand is from Aragon. Isabella got a larger kingdom and more money, Ferdinand got the crown. There you go. He goes and he argues and says, listen, I could find another route to the Indies that could bring you a lot of money. Now let me just pause here for a minute to say a few things. I remember hearing years ago that in order to finance the voyage in 1992, October 12, 1992, well, before that actually, this gracious lady used her jewels to finance the voyage. Let me tell you what really happened. The merchants of Venice financed the voyage of Columbus. They had the money. They financed it. They financed their boy because he was a fellow Italian. Yes, she put up some shares, but the bulk of the shares actually came from seven banking houses from Venice. And one was headed by the head of the Medici family. That's where the money came from. So he sails the ocean blue. And a lot of the pictures that you see normally would show these stately looking um, Europeans, sorry, I went too far. Stately looking Europeans. No, I don't like it back. <laughs> That's one of the challenges of dealing with an apple, which I'm not aware of. Boy, I'm going too far. Yeah. Left arrow. Trust me, I'm clicking the one backward and it's still going forward. <laughs> um, tactical person, please. Because <laughs> I don't want to go too far. I just don't want to go too far ahead. Are you an apple guy? I'm going to stick with my <laughs> my old system because I know how to work that. There is a fuss that comes about. Who gets what? 
The Spanish says, I want everything. The Portuguese say, uh-uh-uh, I need so-and-so. And so they can't decide who gets what. Pope Alexander VI comes forward. And whether he closes his eye, open his eyes, however do, we don't know. But he draws a line. And signs what's called the Treaty of Tordesia, which splits the world literally in two spheres. All of this on this side, including the Americas, Spain, you all can do whatever you all want over here. A little piece of, um, of Brazil that's left over here, well, you got to leave that because the Portuguese got to get that. And then they have all of the Indies. So that's how that was divided. By the time of the 1600s, Latin Florida, Spanish had already gone into Florida. And Florida was not like we know it today, which is this. And handle on them, this area here. Actually, it was all of this, all of the Mississippi Valley, all of this area, all of Georgia, all of that was Florida. I say that for a reason, which I'll come to in a few moments. The French challenged them. Jean Ribault came and he established two um, two settlements, one in here and one further here. here. They were able to chase them out. So they got rid of the French, that is the Spanish. And the English came in. Drake, Hawkins, and those guys, they came in and they robbed and pillaged and did whatever they could. But also, um, the English were responsible for Jamestown. So now the whole complexion is changing. Because now the English are beginning to challenge the Spanish authority in the Americas. We know about the Lord's proprietors. A lot of us heard the story many times. We know about Preacher's Cave. We know how the people from Muda came down and they actually they got chased up quite frankly. But they came down just the same and they sat up in this cave and there was some. Um, they used this as a sanctuary also. Now, there was a study done probably arguably within the last three years or so, where there were some graves that were found in there. In this corner here, I recall, um, were the graves of two little, two little girls. The thing is sensitive. I'm getting myself in trouble again, so here I am. It's very sensitive. There were two little girls. Need some help again, I'm sorry. I took something. There were two little girls up in one corner. And then to the back, there was a grave of a European. And on top of that grave, literally on top of that, of those remains, The researchers argue that that Indian unlikely was a Lucayan. And I think they failed to realize, and I know Anne and Jim Lola would have seen this in their research, for sure. They seem to have realized that when the Bermudan adventurers came down, they would have had Indians with them. Because it was the practice in Bermuda to have the Pequot Indians. So it more than likely was not Lucaya, more than likely it was one of those. So just to set that record straight. Something happens in 1776. Spirit of 1776. These guys decided that no representation, 
be bought out. Now, who are these guys? 